Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cullum Hall this morning and the Assumption of Command Ceremony for Brigadier General Diana M. Holland as she assumes command of the United States Corps of Cadets as the 76th Commandant. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of honors, the national anthem, and invocation. The official party for today's ceremony consists of Lieutenant General Robert L. Caslin, Jr., the 59th Superintendent of the United States Military Academy, Brigadier General Diana M. Holland, the 76th Commandant of the United States Corps of Cadets, and Command Sergeant Major Don Rippelmeyer, Command Sergeant Major of the United States Corps of Cadets. For today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Caslin has deferred honors to the incoming Commandant. CC Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Harold Klein will now give this morning's invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to pray with me if you so choose. Almighty God, we bid our new Commandant, Brigadier General Holland, a hearty hail this morning. We are grateful she has come to lead our team. We expect great things of her as she no doubt expects great things of us. Grant that we might find mutual satisfaction in each other's efforts. We ask that you strengthen her for the task at hand. Grant her the insight and the patience necessary to lead the United States Corps of Cadets. Aid us together as we inculcate the values of duty, honor, and country in our cadets. Help us at this hour to be conscious of those of our number who are deployed, and grant that we might never forget those who have fallen in combat. Give us grace this day. In your almighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As a welcoming to the installation to the United States Corps Cadets and the West Point community, Cadet Blake Paquette is now presenting a gift as a token of appreciation to Mr. Holland. Ladies and gentlemen, the official party will now move forward and conduct the passing of the colors as Brigadier General Diana M. Holland assumes command of the United States Corps of Cadets as the 76th Commandant. The custodian of the colors is the Command Sergeant Major. When the colors are not displayed for the commander, it and the unit are in the care of the Command Sergeant Major. Since the beginning of recorded history, military leaders have used a visible symbol of authority around which to rally their command. The organizational colors embody the spirit and essence of the unit, representing the body of the unit, its soldiers, material, their esprit de corps, and the unit's history and service to the army and the nation. The ceremonial passing of the organizational colors continues 
a tradition that has existed in the United States Army since the days of General George Washington. Today, the passing of the colors of the United States Corps cadets symbolizes the assumption of responsibility for the unit by Brigadier General Diana M. Holland. By authority of Title X and by the direction of the President of the United States, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Corps of Cadets, United States Military Academy, West Point, New York. Signed, Diana M. Holland, Brigadier General, Commandant of Cadets. Ladies and gentlemen, the 59th Superintendent of the United States Military Academy, Lieutenant General Robert L. Caslin, Jr. Well, good morning, everybody. What a great turnout. It's great to see everybody. General Anderson, General McMaster, and General Grizzoli, great to see you. General Rapp, oh, wonderful to see all of you here. And General Nichols said, Wonderful, just a great to see you. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, General Trainer and Don and Lou Corrigan and Kristen, great to have you as well. Sergeant Major, great to have you as part of here. It really is a wonderful day to welcome our new Commandant of Cadets, Brigadier General Diane Holland, to West Point Community as she assumes command as the 76th Commandant of Cadets. Diana has some special guests attending this morning that I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge. First of all, New York State Assemblyman Audie Russell representing New York's 116th district, which includes Fort Drum. Uh, Senator uh, uh, Larkin from New York State and his, and his lovely wife as well. Welcome to all of you. Doctors Marsha Frey and Linda Frey, who taught in the history department where Diana first met them. And of course, a uh, very special welcome to the Holland family, Diana's husband, James. Her parents, Ralph and Johnny, are here from Arkansas and her aunt, uncle, and cousin, David, Valentina, and Matthew Brock her, are here from California. So welcome to all of you. In the summer of 1976, several hundred new cadets reported to West Point on our day for cadet basic training and began their journey toward becoming commissioned officers in the United States Army. Among that group of new cadets were 119 women. The first time in our academy's history that women were admitted to West Point, thanks to legislation that was signed by President Gerald Ford the year prior. Four years later, 62 of these women would graduate with the class of 1980, to include names like Sue Fulton, who's the chair of our current Board of Visitors, and McDonald, who would later achieve the rank of Brigadier General. Pat Walker, now Pat Locke, who's been very instrumental in helping West Point in its diversity efforts. And Andrea Holland, who was not only the first woman to graduate, but also earned the Rhodes Scholarship. Since then, thousands of women have joined the Long Gray Line. Many of them trailblazers in their own right, both here and throughout the Army. A number of those early graduates would return to West Point to serve as TAC officers and academic instructors. Becky Halstead from the class of 1981 would become the first woman graduate to attain general officer rank, while Colonel Daisy Botner from the class of 81 and Colonel Rich Ryan from the class of 82, who just recently retired, would become the first woman graduates to serve as an academic department head at West Point. Graduates like Lieutenants Laura Walker and Emily Perez and Captain Sarah Knutson and Lieutenant Colonel Jamie Leonard would give their lives in service to our great nation. And in just this past year, three graduates, Captain Kristen Grice, Lieutenant Shea Haver, and Major Lisa Jaster would make history as they graduated from Ranger School, while Major General Nadja West from the class of 1982 received her third star and assumed duties as the Army Surgeon General, making her the highest ranking female in the Long Gray Line. And today, we mark another first 
as Brigadier General Diana Holland becomes the first woman to serve as a Commandant of Cadets. You know, Time Magazine got it all wrong. Between our women rangers, the removal of the combat exclusion law, the assignment of an African-American woman as a three-star Surgeon General, and now the assignment of women general officer as a Commandant of Cadets, and again, all West Point graduates. It was a tremendous opportunity to recognize the women of the United States Army as Persons of the Year. As I mentioned when J.T. Thompson relinquished command a few weeks ago, the Commandant of Cadets has such a significant role in our mission to train, educate, and inspire leaders of character for service to the nation as Army officers, prepared to fight and win America's wars. The COM is the M in military in the United States Military Academy, with the awesome responsibility of the military, physical, character, and social development for more than 4,600 cadets. JT left some pretty big boots to fill, but I'll tell you, Brigadier General Diana Holland is immensely qualified for the job. Diana graduated with the proud and mighty class of 1990. Incidentally, one of her classmates, Kristen Baker, had the distinction of being West Point's first female brigade commander. And even then, more than 25 years ago, Diana's classmates knew she was destined for great things. To quote from her howitzer entry, quote, we knew Diana was destined for greatness when she won the drill off in Beast, and now she is in charge of the regimental drill. Look for her 5-1 frame in her pickup truck back at West Point a few years as a history P and many years later as the soup. <laughs> well, we knew she did return to West Point a few years later to teach in the history department, and now we welcome her back as the comm. And there's still some time for that howitzer prophecy of one day becoming a suit, so it may just come true. Owen oh, as her new neighbor, I can personally vouch for the pickup truck. <laughs> Diana has an impressive resume. She's a career engineer officer who has served as platoon leader, company XO, battalion's logistic officer, company commander, division plans officer, and a battalion operations officer. Along the way, she earned a master's degree in history at Duke University, and as I mentioned a moment ago, came back to West Point as an instructor and assistant professor. She served as a plans officer and branch chief on the CENTCOM staff, as well as a tour in the Pentagon as XO to the director of the Army staff. Diana has commanded the 92nd Engineer Battalion and the 130th Engineer Brigade. And in between these command tours, she was a fellow at Georgetown University. And most recently, she was a deputy commanding general for support at the 10th Mountain Division, the first woman to be, deep, to be a deputy commanding general for a light infantry division, and the first woman general officer at Fort Drum. Her combat experience includes deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom and Freedom Sentinel. General Holland has a phenomenal reputation throughout the Army. The Corps of Cadets is getting a great commander and an outstanding leader. So I know that Diana is eager to take the reins and we're ready for her to get to work. So Diana, as you assume command, if I were to give you one bit of guidance, it would be this. Keep the M strong in USMA. On behalf of the entire faculty and staff, we welcome you and the team and look forward to your leadership in the Corps of Cadets. Welcome, Diana. Welcome, Jim. We're glad that you're here. Beat Navy and Publish Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 76th Commandant of the United States Corps of Cadets, Brigadier General Diana M. Holland. Good morning, Lieutenant General Caslin, distinguished guests, general officers, leaders, staff and faculty, family and friends and cadets of our military academy. Thank you all for being here today. I know everyone is very busy following the holiday season, 
with the transition back from leave, back to another academic semester, particularly coming back to this very cold weather. For those of you who came from out of town, thank you for making the trip. It means a lot to Jim and me that you could be here. My gratitude to the entire team for planning and organizing this event. It was not easy given the timing and the holidays, so I really appreciate the extra effort you all put forth to make this so special. Lieutenant General Kaslin, thank you for your generous words. Jim and I appreciate the welcome we received from you and your family as we were moving in the week of Christmas. Though truth be told, it was the venison that ultimately won us over. <laughs> But seriously, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with you. I know I will learn a lot from you in the months ahead. Likewise, the other key leaders, Brigadier General Tim Trainer, Boo Corrigan, and Command Sergeant Major Ripplemeyer, thank you for your hospitality over the last couple of weeks. I look forward to joining such a high-performing team. I'll also thank Major General Thompson and his wife, Holly. Of course, they've already moved on to Fort Hood. But they did a superb job transitioning with Jim and me uh, from a distance. They clearly had a positive and lasting impact on the Corps cadets and the West Point community. It's an honor to follow in their footsteps. You know, returning to West Point this time has been quite surreal for a number of reasons, not the least of which that it's eerily close to fulfilling my howitzer entry, already mentioned by Lieutenant General Caslin in his remarks. That entry was written by Beth Richards, my roommate of three and a half years and very close friend. She couldn't be here today, but I can hear her right now shouting from afar, I told you so. <laughs> anyway, this assignment was completely unexpected. In fact, when word first got out, I refused to believe it. Surely there had been a mistake. When I told Jim of the news, he immediately recognized the historic significance and expressed what we both were thinking you're going to be the first commandant who's too short to see over the poop deck. <laughs> well, apparently seeing over the poop deck without a step stool isn't a minimum requirement. <laughs> so again, it's very humbling to be here. Humbling because I'm only here due to the support and mentorship of many, many others and the amazing teams to which I've belonged. So I'll start with my first Army team, the class of 1990. Many of them are here today, and I'm, I so appreciate your demonstration of support. That sense of teamwork really started the day we came together in 1986. The proud and the mighty proved to be an appropriate motto. I distinctly, distinctly remember challenging myself to work harder, to be as fast or as strong or as skilled or as smart as many of you. It was a healthy competition that inspired me to be better every single day. But when I wasn't as strong or as skilled or as smart, I could always turn to one of you for help or advice. I'm grateful to know you, to have served with you, and most importantly, to be counted as one of you. I also had the fortune to play on the women's lacrosse team, despite the lack of skills at the start. Great friends, in fact, I got to call out two of them who are here today. Uh, Debbie Dines and Margaret Manry. Uh, the three of us were the co-captains of the women's lacrosse team from 1989 to 90. And I just want to point out that we beat Navy that year. <laughs> Since graduation, I was fortunate to work with so many impressive leaders. Again, too many to list here. But I do want to highlight some of those individuals who are in attendance today. Lieutenant, lieutenant Colonel John Vickers, my company commander when I was a lieutenant in Germany. Colonel Dan Gray, my battalion commander when I commanded a company at Fort Bragg. A number of people from my second tour here when I taught in the history department, but special recognition to professors Marsha Fry and Linda Fry, who are good friends to Jim and me and actively supported my academic endeavors convincing me that scholarship contributes to effective military leadership. Command Sergeant Major Ron Patterson, truly one of the greatest non-commissioned officers in our Army. We were the command team of the 92nd Engineer Battalion at Fort Stewart and a very challenging 12-month deployment to Afghanistan. Lieutenant General Anderson, my boss during another 
deployment to Afghanistan when he served as Commander ISAF Joint Command. Lieutenant General Grisoli, I was his XO for part of his stint as a director of the Army staff. Not only was he the hardest working general officer in the headquarters, which is saying a lot, but he did it with such professionalism, outward calm, and even temperament. What a great role model for all of us who served with you. Now, most importantly, my family. My uncle, aunt, who came all the way from California, brought my cousin Matt from New Jersey. Unfortunately, he is a Navy veteran, but we, we've, we allowed him to stay in the house last night. Great to have you with us today. My dad and my stepmother, who drove all the way from Arkansas, it was my dad who first suggested to me that I consider attending one of the service academies back when they began admitting women. I was only eight at the time, but... <laughs> but remarkably had already expressed a desire to serve in the military. And his suggestion immediately took hold. It was he who dropped me off here almost 30 years ago to become a West Point cadet. I appreciate your love and support for convincing me early on that I could achieve anything. I just had to work hard and treat people right. My husband, Jim, simply put, he is a saint. He has been there every step of the way, and lately that has been quite a path. Most noteworthy three PCS moves in the last 18 months. Now he prefers to stay out of the limelight, and he doesn't ask for much. Well, he does ask for one thing, and that wherever we go, there is good hunting and fishing. <laughs> Luckily, the Army has generally cooperated with us on that. But I wouldn't be able to serve the way that I do, with the passion that I do, Without your support, your encouragement, I thank you and I love you very much. In closing, I'm very grateful for this opportunity, first to be part of a winning team that demonstrates continuous excellence and contributes to our nation in such significant ways in times of peace and in conflict. Second, the opportunity to work with incredibly talented young men and women such as those that you find here. They are an inspiration, and serve as a constant reminder that the future of our Army will be in good hands. And finally, to contribute to a purpose that is so consequential for our soldiers. Our soldiers who achieve amazing things, overcome incredible obstacles around the world, and make great sacrifices every single day. They ask for very little in return, really only that they be well led. It is particularly gratifying to support a mission that answers that call. For those reasons and then some, I appreciate this opportunity and look forward to working with this team. Thank you all again for joining us today. And go Army, beat Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the official Army song. The Army goes rolling along. Please feel free to sing along as it is played. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony.
Please join Brigadier General Holland at the West Point Club for the receiving line to bid her welcome and offer congratulations at the reception. Thank you for attending today's ceremony and enjoy the remainder of your morning. All guests are asked to exit the building at the south stairwell as they make their way to the reception in the ballroom at the West Point Club.